This is an amazing story about pizza, but not just any pizza, Domino's Pizza. But it's not a story about how it is the largest pizza chain in the world with 20,000 stores worth $18 billion. No, this is a story of how it all started. After one small boy who grew up in an orphanage and came from nothing, wanted to work hard and do something with his life. Now, in a rare interview, he tells his story of how he built a billion dollar pizza empire. And why he left it all to pursue something deeper in life. I'm Colm Flynn, and I've come to Naples in Florida to meet the founder of Domino's Pizza, Thomas Monaghan. Thomas Monaghan had a rough start in life. He was born in Ann Arbor in Michigan and was only four years old when his father passed away at Christmas. Well, he died uh, on Christmas Eve and when I was four. Christmas Eve? Almost five. Wow. Do you remember that? Well, I remember at the funeral home, they were keeping me out of there, but then we happened to be uh, walking through and I saw the casket with him and I went up to it and, I, and I, there he was in a suit on. And I said, wake up, Daddy, wake up, Daddy. And they, they pulled me out of there. Mm. That was really heart wrenching. His mother wasn't able to cope after her husband's death and a young Thomas and his brother were put into an orphanage, St. Joseph's Home for Boys. So when you were in the orphanage then for six years, you're, you're wondering, why did my father have to die? Were you angry as well that you were in an orphanage? Were you, were you thinking, why is this? Well, why I'd be like other kids. And the orphanage was, uh, basically it was like a prison. It was 50 boys, Polish nuns, very strict, very holy. Life in the orphanage was tough. It was strict with plenty of work to do. And one of Thomas's jobs every day was to clean the small chapel, which brought him close to the Blessed Sacrament. I had the honor the last couple of years I was there to clean the chapel, everybody a different part of the, of, the, of the structure. And I had the chapel. And so I spent a lot of time before the Blessed Sacrament. And was it something about the Blessed Sacrament when you were in there? I, I, felt, uh, I felt I was in a special place. And I, and I, and I of course, knew that uh, Jesus in that tabernacle up there. And even though he would sometimes get upset in the orphanage, he never despaired, and instead, he focused on what he could do after he left. Just wait till I'm on my own. You know, I just look in the head. Uh, I was going to, I was going to do all the things I'm capable of doing and want to do and should do when I'm 18 years old and I'm on my own. After leaving the orphanage, Thomas spent some time in the U.S. Marines. And then after that, he was a little bit lost in life, looking for a job, and for a purpose. It was then that his brother suggested he borrow a couple of hundred dollars to buy an old pizzeria that was for sale in Ann Arbor in Michigan. It was called Dominic's. Dominic's Pizzeria. Yeah, and, uh, my br and it was a hole in the wall, $500 down, but became the largest pizza chain in the world. <laughs> it's incredible, isn't it? <laughs> He changed the name from Dominic's to Domino's and then opened two other pizzerias in Michigan, each store represented by a dot on the Domino's logo still there today. He had a sharp mind and over the next two decades, he redesigned the pizza box to keep the pizzas hotter for longer. He insisted they only focus on takeaway and delivery, no more dining in. He designed the conveyor belt pizza oven to cook the pizzas faster. And he guaranteed a hot pizza in 30 minutes or your money back. A stroke of marketing genius. That's when Domino's and Thomas's life started to change forever. And finally, after 20 years, I got everything worked out. And that was, I started in 1960, this was 1980. And we took off like a rocket. We were the fastest growing restaurant chain in the history of the world. In 1985, we opened 954 stores, more than anybody ever did. In one year? One year. 950. And actually, in a 12-month period, we did over 1,000. Wow. In the calendar year. 900, and, that's like three stores a day are opening that's up. That's right. Three and, stores uh, a day. And the beginning, in 1980, we had about 300 stores. About 
86 or 7, we had 5,000. Thomas Monaghan, the once orphan, went from having three stores to hundreds, to thousands, to tens of thousands all over the world. But do you know the funny thing about that name, Domino's? You know what it means in Latin? No. The Lord. Thomas was still praying to the Lord, but was distracted. His enormous success had brought enormous wealth. Some say he's worth at least $300 million, rich enough to buy almost anything he wants, including his hometown baseball team. As the business became phenomenally successful, it made you a phenomenally wealthy man as well. How did that change your life? Yeah, they, were, they listed me in the Forbes and Fortune as a billionaire. And I think I was, I don't know if I was 50 yet or not, maybe. How does that change you as a person, going from growing up in an orphanage and then being a billionaire? I wasn't as ready for it as I thought I was. Uh, I was going to Mass every day, practicing my faith, reading a lot of spiritual books, uh, and I thought, I can handle it, I can handle it. But I got into the toys. I, I, I justified the yachts, the airplanes. I remember reading a quote from you once, Tom, where you said, my life had become a high-speed train going down the tracks, but was about to become a train wreck. That was true. It was after reading C.S. Lewis one night that Thomas realized that he was chasing material possessions to try and prove to others that he was successful in life. C.S. Lewis said uh, the reason you uh, aim so high and want so much, it's not what you want, it's what you want is more than other people. I'll sell more pieces than anybody else. I have more money than anybody. And I thought, that's not what I want to be. You want me to do that? <laughs> Thinking of his legacy and wanting to give back, in 1998, Thomas Monaghan sold Domino's Pizza for a reported $1 billion. And with that money, he did something extraordinary. He built not just a university, but a church and an entire town called Ave Maria, where young Catholics could study, live their faith with their families and grow in community. So I want to be a beacon for Catholic higher education. Show that orthodoxy sells. Today, there are around 33,000 people living in Ave Maria town, with its own neighborhoods, bars, restaurants, and parks. The church Thomas built is at the center of the campus and the square, with a sculpture of the Archangel Gabriel over the door. The university has over 1,200 students who study a range of subjects like economics, biochemistry, business, nursing, politics, physics, theology, and so on. And at 86 years of age, Thomas Monaghan is still focusing on what matters to him most in life. What is your, your dream and hope for this place? I want every student to come out being a well-formed Catholic, well-educated. I want to uh, uh, teach courses that the church needs the most. Your faith today, Tom, how is your faith today? I'm working on it. Still a work in progress? Yeah, I, I think I got to make it up to do. I, I, during the, those go-go years, I call it, I, 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 uh, I wasted a lot of uh, God's money. When I get to the pearly gate, and, and, and God's been very good to me, I want to, I want to be able to uh, say I, uh, I used what he gave me uh, well. Thomas Monahan, it's been a pleasure. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. In Ave Maria Town, Florida, Colum Flynn, EWTN News in Depth.